Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to our worship. I'm Pastor Debbie from Mount Zion Lutheran Church. We're glad you could join us this morning. Let's begin by pausing and confessing our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be forgiven. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of a world you so love. Amen. Now hear this good news. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 38. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any, any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends our reading. <clears throat> I couldn't sleep Wednesday night, and therefore I was actually awake for the musical performance at the end of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And I'm so glad that I got to hear British award-winning newcomer Celeste sing, Hear My Voice. The simple and powerful message in the song's chorus spoke to me. Hear my voice, hear my dreams. Let us make a world in which we believe. I found the song relevant to our current events and our gospel for today. First, the world we all live in right now, well, it's filled with a variety of divisive rhetoric, some misinformation, and a pandemic that does not give us a clear picture of the future. It can be confusing when there are so many people vying for our attention, hoping we will listen to their points of view. Living in a time with lots of uncertainty, it's hard to wade through the myths and the lies to find the truth. As one member recently said to me, I don't know who to listen to. And that's where the gospel comes in. As a community of people following Christ, the best way to understand God and the world around us is to pay attention to what Jesus says and does, to whom he reaches out, and to those he gives attention and help. And then we look at today's gospel lesson. <laughs> Ironically, it's an example of Peter not wanting to listen to Jesus' voice and the stuff he's saying. So let me set things up for you, just 
two verses before this gospel lesson begins, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. Good answer, Peter. And then today, we hear Jesus continue this conversation with his disciples. He began openly teaching them what being the Messiah meant for him and for his disciples. For Jesus, his Messiahship would cost him his life, as he would eventually be publicly shamed and tortured to death on a Roman cross. But that costly price would in turn lead to glory for him, because after three days, he would rise. This was a hard teaching for Peter to understand. Remember, he's on this side of the resurrection, and he doesn't want to hear about suffering and rejection and dying. So Peter took Jesus aside and began rebuking him, protesting what Jesus was saying. Yikes. <laughs> so then Jesus immediately rebukes Peter and calls him Satan, pointing out that he's focused on human, not divine things. You know, it's easy to get stuck in thinking about human things. One example that comes to mind is Thomas Jefferson. If you didn't know it, he was an Episcopalian, a vestry man in his Virginia parish and very well versed in scripture. But he decided to create his own version of the New Testament by using a pen knife to cut out and rearrange the portions of the Bible he liked best to produce a text more to his own taste. Jefferson produced an 84 page volume bound in red leather and entitled it The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, that may be an extreme example, but it drives home the point that if we listen to Jesus through our own personal filters and preferences, then we are really not listening to all of Jesus' words. It's more like it's our will, not God's will. You see, Jesus' words are more than a philosophy or a good advice for us to pick up and choose when it suits us. Jesus is the Son of the living God, and we are to take Jesus and all of his words seriously. And that includes these words. If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. The cross that Jesus speaks of does not refer to our individual burdens, such as a bad job or crabby in-laws, or hurt feelings, or an illness. The cross Jesus is journeying toward is his own death, as a result of living out God's kingdom in the world. And our faith calls us to listen and follow Christ to the cross, through the cross and into his resurrection, believing our salvation comes not from ourselves, but only from God. The gospel promises that following in the way of the cross offers us life, and it is our way beyond death. So, how do we carry this cross? Well, by listening to Jesus, hearing the word of God spoken and preached, and by reading the Bible and studying it. By knowing Jesus' words contained in it, we can focus our minds and hearts on divine things, receive the courage to let go of human things, and be free to follow Jesus where he leads. By picking up our cross and following Jesus, that's where we find the truth and meaning for our lives. And in this age of uncertainty, listening and following Jesus gives us confidence in the future that he has planned for us even if it's different from what we envision for ourselves, even if 
it's harder and more all-consuming than any of us can imagine. Which means that in this crazy world of ours, there is more to this life than we can see, and we are to trust Jesus and his promises. Today, Jesus is asking us to be all in for him, for God, and for each other. Listen to Jesus' words and his vision for us, and make a world in which we all believe. Amen. We continue our service with him uh, with one voice, 733. If you have a hymnal at home or on the internet, you can search for Our Father, We Have Wandered. And we're going to sing all three verses. <laughs> Morrison. When we cry out, O benevolent God, hear us, we pray. Bless all families and our communities. Keep children safe. Sustain expectant parents and those facing infertility. And protect women in childbirth. Accompany everyone who lives alone. Equip the ministries that attend to families in their needs. We cry out, O loving God, hear us, we pray. Praises to you, O God, for the centuries of saints whose faithfulness inspires our Lenten journey. 
Bless those who mourn the half million dead of the virus. Be our way, our truth, our light, and strengthen our faith in the gift of your final salvation. When we cry out, O everlasting God, hear us, we pray. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now God bless you, that you may be a blessing to others. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Our final hymn for today is um, the Lutheran Book of Worship, number 104, if you have a hymnal. If not, I'm sure you can find the verses on the internet of the hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. And we'll be singing.